Welcome to the OrthoCast. Today we have Crisco. He is Australian, he is Orthodox, and he is a fellow YouTuber. You can go subscribe to him right now, Steadfast Godcast. And he actually did my first interview. He asked me to come on his channel about a year ago, and we connected over my other channel, Christian Simplicity and Minimalism. And then he found my Orthodox channel too. So it was like the, the perfect mix of, of topics. So yeah, that was, a, that was a really good interview. But, you know, he's Greek. He was raised Orthodox. So my first question for you was, you know, how was that? You know, being raised Orthodox, you know, was it taken seriously? Did you ever like fall away? If so, like what brought you back and made you so strong in the faith and like make you want to make this YouTube channel? Paul, uh, Christos Anesti, mate, Christ is risen. Amen. Um, look, firstly, uh, before we go into that, look, I just wanted to say thank you so much for having me on your channel. Um, what you're doing for the Orthodox community is unbelievable. Um, God bless you, brother, always. And uh, sorry about my voice. It's uh, early in the morning here today <laughs> and uh, it's a bit raspy. But um, once again, brother, thank you so much for having me on. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. I'm an Australian uh, born Greek Cypriot. So I am a cradle Orthodox, of course. But look, I, I was never super religious, but like I believed in God. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my mum used to take me to church when I was younger, yeah. you know, take communion. And uh, I remember just being so bored in church. I was just like, oh man, you know, when I'm 18, I'm out of here. You're not going to see me again, you know. Yeah. Um, I stopped going to church uh, when I was 18, um, apart from, you know, the Easter's and the Christmases and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, when I was 18, I started to sort of question, you know, do we really need the church and and what's the deal with the saints and the traditions of, of the church and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I started thinking, you know, maybe all we need to do is just believe in God and, and that's it. That's all, you know, that's all we need. Um, it was more of a sort of Protestant way of thinking. Yeah. That was my sort of thinking about things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so naturally, you know, when I was 18, uh, I was going to, to nightclubs and stuff like that. Or say DJing. So my mentality was drinking all the time and going out and, and doing some really, believe me, I was doing some really stupid stuff that I de deeply repented of and um, deeply regret. Um, things I probably obviously couldn't say here, but yeah. look, that's what happens when you fall into the to the wrong crowd, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, when you're, when you're young, you think that sort of stuff is the norm, you know, but, but you know, you work out as you get older that it's not. So, um, yeah, that's that's sort of you know when I was eighteen in the in the mid mid twenties and stuff. Um, but the last probably four years or so, last few years, um, I've been doing some uh, professional wrestling. Mm. So uh, <laughs> at the start of twenty, I know the WWE that's, stuff. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's a bit of fun. But yeah, just before just before COVID really hit, mm. um, I copped a kick to the side of my head, um, which really gave me some some bad anxiety um for the first time you know like i was i was crying i was crying like a baby you know it was wow. mentally i wasn't right um i felt like i was a burden to my family it was a it was a real tough time for me it's a tough time for my family too you know um going through that you know because you know you don't understand um that mental side of it you know i was always really strong and i was like I was always really strong mentally, and then and then that really rocked my world. So yeah. I didn't know what to do, and I remember having uh, this New King James Bible that we had. It was like a brand new Bible that we had for ten years stored away. And <laughs> oh, wow. Actually, actually, still got it here. It's a bit, oh. it's a bit damaged now, but <laughs> wow, that's cool. But um, and I started reading it for the first time. The first time, and I, I, honestly, I didn't even know what I was reading. Of course, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and I just remember it gave me really good, you know, great comfort, you know, reading it. And uh, I remember praying to God and saying, you know, Lord, look, if you can heal me from this, please, Lord, you know, I, I will be, uh, you know, I will, I will do whatever I can. I'll never disown you. I'll be a warrior for you. You know, um, I just really want to learn more. I want to become a, a follower of Christ, you know. Yeah. So, look, by the grace of God and in his mercy, I, I don't have extreme anxiety anymore. Wow. You know, I have, yeah. So, yeah. you know, sometimes I might get thoughts, 
um, that come in, but uh, nothing too crazy. I know how to control a lot better. Um, and I'm just so thankful. I have the most amazing wife and family that supported me through this as well. Um, but I think looking back to, uh, it's actually a good thing. See what, what, what you might think, uh, yeah. you know, God's done, um, something good in your life. Yeah. I understand completely what you're saying. It's like, you know, you're doing, you're just living your life. You're continuing down this path and that path ultimately leads to destruction. And while this thing that came up, it may seem like really bad in the moment. Like, why is this awful thing? It's kind of like an awakening and gets you to like reconsider the route of your life. And it's like made you, you know, kind of you, you repented and you, you know, transform your life. And that's what, you know, Christianity is, is all about. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people have had that, like it really, sometimes it takes hitting rock bottom to really reconsider the route that you're on. And then you're like grateful um, that it happened, even though it was like a bad thing, but it like, it was the wake up call that you needed. So, yeah, exactly. Um, if, if God didn't allow that anxiety in my life, I wouldn't have started to read the Bible. I wouldn't have got closer to Christ. And, and, you know, that's how the journey started for me uh, again. You know, um, it helped obviously reading the Bible and watching other Christian videos, mm -hmm. but the issue was at the time, it wasn't an issue, but the issue was that, it was a more Protestant way of thinking the way I was thinking. Yeah. And I didn't think much of it at the time. But what I was doing was I was going to different Protestant churches. I went to the Baptist one oh. close to me. I went to an Anglican one. And, you know, it was good because, you know, they were saying, you know, they were reading from the Bible and, and, and stuff like that. And I was like, we were getting really close with it. It felt very warm and all that sort of stuff. And it was really good. But what I found was different interpretations, different pastors saying different things, different beliefs. And I was like, you know, one one church was saying that they were doing infant baptisms. The other ones saying they weren't. The other ones were saying this. The other ones were saying this. I'm going, hang on a second here. This isn't right. Like, how come we've got different interpretations of things? It was a red flag for me. Yeah. You know, um, you know, these things that I had objections with orthodoxy, you know, um, about the icons, about, uh, you know, the, the saints in the church, about, you know, calling the priest father, these things. I looked at it and I'm like, well, that's not biblical. I was very ignorant of my way of thinking about things. Yeah. But then I realized you know what, like in the church, they've been doing this for a long time. It's, it's, it's a, it's 2000 years of the church. So what yeah. was the church? So it only took me to do a little bit of research to find out that, wow, like the early church believed in infant baptism, the early church believed in the intercession of saints, you know, yeah. and so on and so forth. And I'm like, wow, I had the, the fullness of the faith with me the whole time. I just didn't accept it. Yeah. You know, that's so learning about, um, you know, why we pray to the saints, you know, why the, the, the church traditions, you know, why do we have icons in the church and so on and so forth. And then it just hit me like a sledgehammer on the side. I go, wow, this is it. Orthodoxy is the fullness of the faith, you know, and, um, and glory to God. I, I came back to the church. Yeah. So yeah. That's an awesome journey, but because like, I know Australia is kind of like America where it's like majority Protestant and, and some Catholics. So it sounded like you had a lot of those, you know, kind of Protestant mindset, especially, you know, church shopping, but you kind of saw the, you saw the flaws in the kind of the church buffet mindset where, you know, you can pick and choose what you want, but, and then you got interested in the early church and, you know, you were in the right, you were born into the right faith and then. That's awesome. And that's the danger as well, because so many people are, are born into the faith mm -hmm. and don't realize what they actually believe. And so and so because the Protestants do this good um, thing with, you know, the Bible and getting people together and they do that really well. Yeah. And they still do that fantastic, probably better than than orthodoxy or Catholicism, where they bring the community together and and they all sing with one accord. 
but that's good until you start realizing and scratching a little bit deep down the surface and go, yeah. hang on a second, there's, there's holes here. Yeah. Was it like, how do you find the resources to, you know, figure out these problems? Because a lot of people don't even really like look into the early church. So you were, were you like looking online? Were you reading books? Was it YouTubers? Like, was there any, any specific resource that helped you the most? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> And he's actually not orthodox. Well, not yet anyway, but yeah. Sam Shamoon was a big one oh, because yeah. Sam Shamoon, although he's really good with uh, Islam, mm -hmm. um, his biblical knowledge is unbelievable. The way he also mem mem memorizes the text is, is fantastic. But um, he was definitely someone who obviously came from the Protestant background, Calvinism as well, and fell in love with the apostolic faith. Yeah. Um, which I think he's very close to becoming orthodox. I can't read his heart, of course, but I think he's he's almost there. Um, but yeah, that that's that to me. He was saying a few things, and that sort of rocked me, you know. And it was like the way I was thinking about things as well. But as, a, as for orthodoxy, I think Father Josiah Trenum for me. Oh yeah, he's great. Ah, uh, top notch. Him yeah. and, and Father Stephen De Young, I think as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, both of, both of those absolute lions, and, and they were the two that really, or three, if you call it, you know, with Sam, um, that really, you know, solidified my, uh, my faith in orthodoxy and I haven't looked back since. Yeah. That that's amazing. Yeah. No, I do. Father Josiah. Yeah. They're all amazing. So, and you, you know, so you know what the, the, the beauty about that is too, they, they came from the Protestant. Oh yeah. That's back, true. So they've got a Protestant background. So that's what you want. You want someone who, who knows where you've been to and yeah. why they've come to where they've been now or where they are now. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's so important is like being able to like kind of know, have a similar journey and like speak in the same language. Like for me, I think I can understand, you know, atheists and especially Catholics, I can understand them really well because like you were once in that mindset. So, yeah, that makes sense that they were able to uh, help, help you the most. But yeah so how, how was it going to like liturgy again and like really getting into it because like you know like intellectually you can see like the problems in uh in these other beliefs but like then actually going to liturgy again and being like wow this you know maybe i thought this was boring when i was a kid but like wow this is like amazing now so yeah look amazing is <laughs> every time we do uh liturgy it's it's unbelievable i mean i bring i've got some catholic friends and even some Protestant friends, which I've taken to, to liturgy now. And, and they say to me every time, it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> and, and some of the times that we've taken them there, it's been in Greek. So, yeah. and, 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 you know, it's hard sometimes for people to understand, yeah. uh -huh. but it's unbelievable. I mean, I personally, even though I am Greek, I personally prefer the English and we are trying now to do more English, but yeah, the liturgy is something else. It's, it's, yeah. You know, and to receive the body and blood of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, the real presence of our Lord. It's I'm speechless. It's it's unbelievable. So uh, glory to God. You know, we love orthodoxy. Yeah, and I think even like it's it's ideal if it's in the language of the of of the people. But even when you go there, you can just feel the sense of of reverence and holiness and respect. And you just don't really find that anywhere else in the modern world, like where people really have respect, like this is something sacred, like, you know, like, you know, keep your voice down, you know, wear, wear, wear nice clothes. Like that's just totally lost. There's just no respect for anything um, like that. Like the, so I think that's what people sense in, in the liturgy is just the reverence for everything. Like you really are, you're, you're worshiping some, you know, God, the creator of the universe. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, you know, we're not singing, we're not putting our hands in the air. We're, we're there to pray to God. We're there to worship our Lord. Uh, it's a very serious thing. We take very, very seriously. And, uh, and we need to, you know, as Orthodox brothers, we need to strengthen um, each other and, and, you know, with fellowship and, 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 and stuff like that, I think as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Great. So the next topic I want to talk about was you know, you found my channel, Christian Simplicity. For those who don't know, I used to have a channel where I talk about like minimalism and lifestyle and also like intermittent fasting and all these lifestyle changes were really important for me because, you know, like you were talking about when you were a DJ, 
like hedonism, eventually like just living that like pleasure seeking lifestyle at all costs. It just, it makes you a slave to like sins and you don't have any control over your life. But for me, like living below your means and learning to be happy with less and doing the intermittent fasting really, really helped me. So how would you, would you say you're like a minimalist or you, you do intermittent fasting or do you want to explain what that is for people who don't know? There. Yeah, so with yeah. minimalism, I suppose, um, I wouldn't call myself like a full-blown minimalist, yeah. but I do try to live within my means. I mean, I've got a family as well, um, you know, with kids, so there's certain things that they want to get, and <laughs> yeah. I sort of, you know, whether it's collection of cards or something like that, so yeah. I can't be a real stickler with uh, being a minimalist. <laughs> I have to give them a bit of fun, but yeah. I have a little bit of a collection too with some soccer jerseys. I have like a little collection with like DVDs, you know, everyone used to collect DVDs 10 years ago. Yeah. So I've still got that. I've got like a Nintendo 64 um, yeah. packed away somewhere with stuff. Yeah. So um, all I've got now really is a little Christian uh, books at the back there, you could see. Yeah. Um, a little bit of um, a collection there. Yeah. Um, so minimalism in that sense, you know, I do try to keep within my means and, and not really go overboard. I've got a pretty modest car. Um, you know, a house isn't anything flash, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, with that side of things, I'm, I'm, I dare say I'm a little bit of a min minimalist, but yeah. um, intermittent fasting I take really seriously. <laughs> um, I've actually lost 20 kilos, which is about, uh, what, 45 wow. pounds. And that's in uh, January I started. So within four months I lost, you know, yeah. 45 pounds uh -huh. um, and that's obviously not just the intermittent fasting but that's also uh, orthodox easter oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's... no dairy no meat yeah um so yeah like i said i take it really far uh, uh really really serious for those who don't know what intermittent fasting is basically uh you know you only eat a certain part of the day and you fast for an x amount of time so for me i do usually a 20 four hour fast. So I eat once a day, sometimes 21 hours. I have done 48 hours wow. as well. Um, that's really good, but I might do that maybe once a month just to really try clean, um, yeah. you know, my body. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually good too, because it helps you focus more, I find. Oh, yeah. You know, the focusing, you know, and because you're not worried about what you're eating, the gluttony side of things, it helps you more, uh, you know, with work. It helps me. It helps me more with my spiritual life. And uh, that's about it, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, 45 pounds I lost in, in four months. So, wow. glory to God. Yeah. No, I think you summed it up perfectly. But, you know, obviously, like, consult your doctor. And, like, every, everyone's body is different. But I think, in general, everyone should do some level of intermittent fasting. Maybe it's just, like, skipping breakfast, eating a small lunch, and then big dinner. You know, I've done it, you know, different periods. Sometimes I do the, you know, just dinner. Sometimes I'll do, you know, small dinner, uh, small, small lunch. But I think that's a huge problem in America is, you know, we have a, we have a huge obesity crisis. And that's why, you know, people need or orthodox fasting. Um, there's actually been a lot of medical studies like doing the, 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 the kind of fasting we do where, you know, throughout the year we, uh, no, no, the, the Orthodox fast, like no, no meat, no dairy and all that, you know, throughout, throughout the year is one of the most healthy diets. So doing the Orthodox fasting, but then also doing intermittent fasting for all the health reasons. And like you were saying, it makes, it just, it feel, it feels like limitless. Like you just feel like so much more focused instead of worrying about, you know, oh, I'm a little bit hungry, uh, got, got to go eat. And then you tend to overeat, especially in America, since all of our portion sizes are so big it's just so easy to overeat and to be gluttonous and a lot of our foods are made with unhealthy things so i think that's important is like if you get a healthy diet and you're and you're not being gluttonous you're gonna feel better like mentally physically spiritually you know losing 45 pounds that's that's a lot of like that's really hard for a lot of people so you know being able to do that um is amazing so yeah everyone should definitely look in the intermittent fasting um, but the thing I want to say about minimalism is that, you know, I used to be super extreme minimalist. I used to have like nothing in my room, like only three things. And, <laughs> you know, I've, I've gotten more stuff now over time. 
because I, I didn't have a lot of money back then too. And, you know, but I think it's important to build, you know, good habits, like learn how to learn how to save your money and not just spend it. Just like you, you just need self-control. I think minimalism is really good for that is, uh, you know, focusing on uh, living below your means. But yeah, definitely. And definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just want to throw a little jab there uh, about Islam, about the fasting. Oh, yeah. So, so you know, when they fast, they always say, you know, we fast from sundown to sunup and, and whatnot. And, and, uh, but they love to, uh, to scourge when they do eat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so there is no point in, you know, absolutely writing yourself off when you can eat and eating like, you know, four meals in one sitting and then fasting. It's about having control. So basically, we're trying to follow what the monks do, really, because that's yeah. what they do. They eat, they eat once, maximum twice, twice a day. So that's what we're trying to do. It's like food is not an issue. And when you do eat food, though, make sure you are eating good food. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, uh-huh. like, try try not to have too many sugary foods. Try not to have too many too much carbs. You know, you don't have to be a, you know, a stickler for it for it. But you don't have to do calorie counting. But you know, try your best to, to live a healthy life, healthy life, healthy brain. You can focus more, be more spiritual, and you can be, uh, you know, a, a more of a light to others. Yeah. No, yeah, perfect, perfectly said. I think uh, Haggard, he's really good at talking about, because there there is like a war on food. There's a certain agenda being pushed, like trying to get people to eat bugs, trying to eat this, you know, weird f- fake meat, fake stuff. And like fast food, all all that all that stuff is just not good for you. Like try and get good quality lo- local source food. But yeah, I think another thing about Islamic fasting is like it's kind of they're very legalistic about it, and it's like they kind of I, I've heard that they you know boast about it, like oh I'm doing the fast. But you know the point of Christian fasting is you're supposed to keep it to yourself. Like it's not about like the outward appearance. It's about the, the N word, like keep, keep the fasting to yourself and like, you don't need to make a big deal out of it. And also not, not losing the spirit of the fast by, you know, just gor- gorging a bunch. So, yeah. Like our Lord said, like our Lord said, don't, you know, have a droopy face every time, you know, someone sees you like, <laughs> yeah. and that's what they do. They come out like, oh yeah, I'm fasting with their face all droopy. It's like, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's a thing for them. They're just ticking boxes and I, every you know, conversation I had with Muslim, which was about two, three days ago. Um, it was about that. You know, it's like you guys, all you are doing is ticking boxes. And I don't want to make this about Islam, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, where it's about the heart for us, uh, us uh, Orthodox Christians. It's about our heart. And that's it. We fix our heart. Our heart makes us better people. And it's the way we follow Christ. That's what he said. Yeah. Otherwise, everything is is wasted. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. That's the most important part of Christianity, but it's also the hardest. Like to actually have that transformation, it's a lot easier just to like you know do all the things, but not actually you know have you know have your heart in the right place. So yeah, but that actually kind of goes in the next topic I wanted to cover was you know you starting your YouTube channel, which again everyone should go, should go subscribe to. But you've actually had Sam Shimoon on, which is is really cool. Like being able he helped you a lot, and then being able to have him on and they've been do, having a lot of videos debunking Islam. So how, how, how was that being, you know, being able to work with him? Yeah. Um, so my channel, uh, I created, uh, look, I wanted to create a channel firstly because I, I just wanted to put things that I liked on there. So I might've borrowed some clips from someone else. Yeah. I'd might make a little couple little clips, you know, with little music in the background. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to do some interviews with some people, but the thing with Sam shoot moon was, I had absolutely no one subscribing. And it was, the thing was, I didn't care. I had no videos, really. I had one little clip that I did for, with Sam. And I just said to him, look, Sam, is it okay if you can come on? He goes, yeah, mate, no problem. <laughs> so he came on. And I remember just being so nervous. <laughs> and, I'm lo- and I'm looking at him. And, I'm, you know, he's only a human being, of course. Yeah. But, you know, this is someone that you've been watching a lot of videos. Yeah. I'm nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, know, I, I don't know no much. And, and, and having him on... Um, was great you know i asked him a few questions a bit of a testimony and whatnot but it was just fantastic having him on and Mm -hmm. and he's helped me tremendously like we said before but um but yeah i mean my channel it's um it's there just so other people can learn 
if I can put some things that edifies others, that's my main goal. I don't care about, for me personally, making money. I've got a job already, so it's not about making money. It's about spreading orthodoxy. I love to share your things. I love to share orthodox shahadist things. Um, whoever, whoever that I like to see prosper or things that I find edifying, I love that. And um, look, the guests I've had on the channel as well, um, I've had Father... Patrick Ramsey, yeah, he's a, he's a delightful man, beautiful, beautiful man. Um, Doctor Bo Branson mm-hmm. yeah. is another one. Oh, he is a very, very clever, clever man. Yeah. Uh, David Erhan, another one, um, who's brilliant. Um, Robert Spencer, yeah, who uh, very, very good with Islam as well. Been doing that for a long time. Yeah. Uh, does a lot of stuff with David Wood, mm-hmm. um, and also uh, has the book. That he published not long ago, uh, the Church and the Pope. Yeah, I have so, that. I have that book. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah it was a very good. good book. And you know what? It's only been about maybe less than a year that I actually found out that he was Orthodox. I had no idea that he was Orthodox. Oh, really? Robert Spencer. So, yeah. and Sam Shimon, of course. So, and yourself, and yeah. yourself. So, um, but that's the guests that I've had on. That was my idea for the channel, basically. Yeah. yeah. I want to get all those people on my, on my on my uh, interview too. Like I'd, I'd like to interview all those people. They're amazing. You know, Dr. Bo Branson on the Trinity, he's like, I mean, he has, he's can't, I don't know if there's anyone better. Uh, Robert, uh. you know, Robert Spencer, his book on Catholicism, David, David Erhan, he, he's amazing. He, he covers so many topics in depth and makes it easy to understand. And if you have questions about Oriental Orthodoxy, because a lot of people do, he's covered that and there's, there's not a lot of information on that. But yeah, I definitely want to have all those people on my uh, podcast too. And yeah, I, I got to go on your uh, your YouTube channel again. But yeah, I saw I saw your one of your latest videos, the the Pentecostal video. I, I like that the the Pentecostal versus Orthodoxy. But like little things like that can make such a big difference. Like if if you want to do something to help Orthodoxy, you don't you don't have to necessarily uh, make your own content. But if you can just share, you know, make make shorts. Make YouTube shorts can be very helpful because it is, and it is really hard to grow on YouTube initially. I mean, I basically got a huge boost because, uh, you know, Jay Dyer shared a lot, a lot of my videos. Um, and that's also one of the reasons I uh, started Dyer, Dyer Clips was because I, I started making the clips for myself. Like, like you were kind of talking about with your channel, you kind of make these clips because you just want to send it to other people. Like I've noticed you have a lot of clips explaining like uh, little things about like icons and like stuff like that is so important. Like, cause people's attention spans are so low. So yeah, if you, if you ever want to help just, uh, you know, make, make little clips, it can, it can make a difference. Definitely brother. Mm-hmm. And what, what about the future of your channel? Do you just want to, you know, kind of continue down, uh, down this path, like doing, doing more interviews, making more clips? Um, yeah, that's basically, yeah, definitely want to just do more clips, um, get more people on. Uh, it's difficult a little bit too with, with work. Like I work, you know, basically six days a week and also do a lot of things with my family. So it is hard to find some time, but whenever I do, I always try and, um, speak with people, like-minded people and try to organize dates. There's a couple of uh, people that we've already organized dates for. Um, one, I don't want to say yet. He said, don't say yet till it's close to the time, but he's a, he's a, he's a warrior, uh, for the faith. So that's really good. Um, that's awesome. uh, but yeah, but that's, that's the thing. So, um, it's very exciting. And the, at the end of the day, we're doing it for the glory of God. It's not for me, mm-hmm. you know, it's for the glory of God. It's to bring people to Christ and, and that's what we're being told to do. So that's the most important thing. Yeah, Exactly. I mean, all my goal is I th- is to try and get people to just go to a divine liturgy because I think once you go, it just it makes sense. You're like this, this is it. Got it. Got to keep going. So yeah, you know, taking that action to watch it, but then actually go in person. But the next question I wanted to cover is like, who, what kind of saints or books have you read a lot about? Like, is there any books that kind of help that helped you that you really liked? You talked about Father Josiah. Um, and so, and some other people did any of their, their books. I really like his book, rock and sand, uh, by father Josiah Chairman. That's like one of the best books on Protestantism. Um, yeah, but any, any books that. Yeah. So yeah. for me, the books, obviously father Josiah's book 
rock and sand, unbelievable, especially yeah. if someone is Protestant. It explains a lot. But even if they're not Protestant, it is just very well written, yeah. uh, easy to follow, um, and it's really good to see from a Protestant mindset to orthodoxy. It's really good. Another one, there is uh, The Religion of the Apostles oh, by yeah. Father Stephen de Young. Yeah. Another real gun uh, book by him. And that's more, you know, to see in context what the early church was like, early Christians, you know, the, the con continuity between, yeah. you know, First Temple Judaism to the Orthodoxy. Now, it's, it's a very, very good book that I really enjoyed. And again, he wrote in a way where it's actually quite easy to follow. Yeah. Uh, another book that I like was um, the Didache, but it's uh, it was it's called the, the Teaching of the Twelve hmm. by Tony Jones, and it's basically the Didache. For the for those of you who don't know what the Didache is, it's basically a uh, first century Christian manual. Uh, well, they say it's first century, so it's basically the probably the first, if not the first. Uh, Christian community, and they wrote out a manual which is basically how to live the Christian life. Oh, so it's okay. actually quite good, very good if if uh, if you guys haven't seen because it actually talks about uh, infant baptism, how to baptize, fasting. It's actually got the fasting Wednesday wow. to Fridays. That's how we got it from. So it's a yeah. it's very very good uh, document to to read, guys, if you haven't already. Of course, we already spoke about uh, our friend uh, Robert Spencer with the church yeah. and the Pope. So that's a very good read, obviously, about, uh, you know, papal infallibility and and uh, the reasons why we believe that St. Peter never claimed supremacy and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, the uh, the good old uh, Orthodox study Bible. How can we, uh, <laughs> yeah. how can we go past the <laughs> fantastic? Yeah. Um, it's got, obviously, some really, really good notes, uh, some from church fathers and I believe some from the... The committee as well, um, really good tops. That's about it, f I think, for me. Yeah. There's probably a lot of others that I haven't mentioned, but that's it. Um, and what else? Yeah, the favorite saint. I suppose um, another story of mine is I'm actually a premature baby. Oh. So I was actually, yeah, that's why I'm a little slow. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so I was actually born at six months. Oh, wow. So I was three months premature. So I don't know if you know this, but in uh, Orthodox, well, Greek Orthodoxy anyway, when the women have issues with giving birth, they usually pray to St. Irene Christovalando. She's a, a saint that God's given her uh, the powers to um, do miracles. So when women have issues with birth or stuff like that, they pray to her and uh, she gives them you know, miracles or gives people miracles. And basically, uh, my mum named me after St. Irene Crusoe wow. And, mate, I was, I was basically, what my mum was telling me anyway, I was, I was dead on the table. I was the size of the palm. That's how small I was. Oh my. And what they did was they would, they would tie like a string to a paddle pop stick. And every time I would be gone, I'd be dead, basically not breathing. They would sort of jolt the, the paddle pop stick and I'll come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> and they basically, yeah, unbelievable what they were doing back then. Wow. And uh, and they had the priest in the room, and my dad was like, "All right, well, call call him, uh, you know, off, call him your dad's name because whatever it's going to be, because he's going to he's going to pass away now." And my mum said, "No, no, no, I'm going to name him Chris Um And then basically, she said, as "Soon as I had the priest there and baptized at inside the the, the hospital, that's it. I was." <laughs> Fantastic! I was made wow. well, and it was, and even the nurses that were there could not believe the miracle Dang. that God allowed. That God allowed. All glory to God. All glory to God that worked through Saint Irene Chrysostom. Uh, but yeah, what a story! And to think that I left Orthodoxy for a bit there—it's <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. Wow, that's uh, that's a crazy story. Yeah, and awesome. glory to God, I'm still here. I'm, I believe I'm healthy, or at least I'm, I, I think I'm healthy. Uh, and I've got two beautiful kids, beautiful wife, you know, nothing else. Whatever God's will is, God's will be done. That's what we have to understand. Whatever God's will, it will be done. And we have to accept it. And whether that's death, whether that's a beautiful life, whatever it is, okay, because he promised us glory with him 
in heaven if we believe. And how do we believe? By following Christ. Very simple, and we have to do the best we can. Yeah, and that's it, brother. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that was that was perfectly put. But yeah, an amazing story. All the books you recommended were really good. Um, you know, Rock and Sand, Apo Religion of the Apostles is one of the best books because it alone refutes Protestantism. It refutes uh, Catholicism, Judaism, and Islam. So it just like knocks down all, like it shows that orthodoxy is a way. It's a great book, but yeah, I'll have to check out that uh, early Christian catechism. But yeah, so my, my final question for you is, what what's a what's a like in the Australia? You know the future of orthodoxy. Do you do you think a lot of people? Do you see a lot of people coming to the Orthodox Church in Australia, uh, or maybe in the future? Or what, what's your outlook? Because in America, it feels like it's growing a lot. Yeah, like and that's what I see a lot. I see like all the videos in America and and the work that we the, the fathers were talking about, Father Josiah Trinum, and just to talk about just quickly with Father Josiah, I also listen to his podcast. Uh, patristic nectar yeah unbelievable his yeah. homily is a uh, second to none so yeah. i think guys if you haven't heard already listen to his podcast he's obviously on youtube as well but his podcast is unbelievable uh so in in america the orthodoxy is flourishing in australia it is doing well mm -hmm. uh you know we're doing a lot of a lot more english services i think when it comes to orthodoxy in english i think the antiochians are the benchmark when it comes to doing services in, in, in English. They're doing a fantastic job by bringing the youth in, new converts and so on. Um, I'm personally in the committee at, at my church down in the South Coast. Uh, it's called St. John the Baptist Greek Orthodox Church. And glory to God, we're organizing the first English liturgy there to be hosted by the bishop and the priest followed by spiritual talks and a luncheon. So this is a very big step to get people there. So it's not only for Orthodox. Obviously, Catholics can come, Protestants, atheists, it doesn't matter. We're bringing everyone to the church to, for them to understand yeah. what we're about. We're not just some crazy people with black hats, <laughs> you know, that, yeah. uh, you know, we, we are the fullness of the faith. We love Christ um, and, and stuff like that. So that's, that's the most important thing. Uh, yeah. to bring you know all nations and uh to the church yeah um but but uh we are trying our best i believe to to do more english because that's what you need to do yeah you need to keep the greek if you're in greek orthodox keep the greek antiochian if they've got the arabic there Serb serbian um have the serbian uh, services there and so on and so forth we're not going to change that no one said to change that but the churches definitely need to have English services, English fellowship, and, and so on. So everyone can be a part of that parish, and that's going to be the goal, and that is the goal for yeah. all the churches, especially here in Australia. Yeah. No, that's really important is the – it's taught, you know, the liturgies and the language of the people. You know, at my church and a lot of churches, they'll do it like half and half, and I think that's good because, you know, you're all going to the same liturgy. You always, you're all going to, you know, coffee hour uh, together. Um, but because that, that can be a barrier, like when people, when it's not in their language, but I, you know, I, I love having like half and half because I get to hear, hear like the beautiful chants in like Serbian and church Slavonic and, and in English. But I think there's an important point that, uh, you know, I want to bring up is, you know, you're involved in your church and that is so important too, is like helping, you know, setting up events like that at your local church. Like if you want to make a difference, you should, there's no reason you can't start doing that at your church like having events that uh invite new people having uh the, the lunches like stuff like that like get involved in uh your church and help 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 your local church grow is is just as important as anything online so yeah yeah well like, that's the thing people think that oh you know what i can't do anything uh, to help the church you can definitely if you're a good cook, you don't even have to be a good cook, but you can be on the barbecue. <laughs> yeah. You can help out in the kitchen. You can be at the front door. You can help set up. You can clean the church. You can get. You can even yeah. blow out the candles at the end of the service. Like you can do so many things to help your church. All you got to do is ask. And everything that we do, do we don't do it for you or myself. We do it for Christ and His glory. And again, I know I'm harping on about this, but that's what we do it for. 
Yeah. You know, it's not for anyone. You know, you shouldn't have arguments with people at church because I want it this way or this. No, there is going to be obviously some disagreements, but always we have to look at what's the reason why we're doing this. Mm-hmm. And it's not for our glory, it's for our Lord. So uh, th- that's it. But I wanted to do a shout out too, if I could, please. Yeah, go ahead. There's a, there's a homegrown Aussie Orthodox channel and they're brothers. And these boys, I don't know if you've heard them, they're, they're called Patristics. Mm. Oh, oh, they're from Australia? I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Yeah. These boys are doing fantastic work. I love these boys. Yeah. Big shout out to them. Uh, brothers, I love them. Um, and they're just doing fantastic work. If you haven't checked them out, please check them out. Yeah. They've got fantastic video clips and they break down little topics. Top notch. Yeah. Top notch. It's their videos are so well made too. Like I like they've got a really nice like aesthetic and setup going. They they've got really nice graphics. I'm really it's really nice to see like a professionally done like uh, like teaching the orthodox basics because um, you know my my channel is a little more uh, like rough around the edges and just like random memes. But this you know de- their channel is really good. I yeah I should I should get them on in the future too. I've got I've got a long list of people I want to get on, but yeah, definitely go check out um, that channel. But and I just want to say as well, yeah. I always tell everybody, and I'm not just trying to pump your tires here. I'm being honest. I tell everyone you got to watch Kyle uh, C's videos. It's not just about orthodoxy. You absolutely obliterate atheism, even Islam. I love your little videos on Islam. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, what else? Uh, Protestantism. Yeah. Uh, even though I, I love my Protestant yeah. brothers, I don't want to, you know, I love them. I really do. Yeah. Uh, I've got very, very close brothers as well in Catholicism, so I don't want to take shreds. But but you do bring really good arguments, you know, and for orthodoxy. And uh, your polemics is fantastic too. So, mate, glory to God for you. Orthocast is is, is booming. Uh, you know, Orthodox, Cole Orthodox, that channel is fantastic. Yeah. And even Christian Simplicity is fantastic too. So, Brother, you're doing fantastic work, mate. Thank you. Well, I think that's a great place to end it. It was great having you on. I will probably be on your channel sometime in the future. 100%. And uh, yeah, look, I'm on uh, YouTube. Obviously, we spoke about Facebook Mm. and TikTok, which I don't really use personally because I don't like TikTok, but a couple of videos, little clips are on there. And I'm on podcasts as well, Google, Spotify, and Apple if you want to see or hear, uh, and it's just steadfast Godcast. And that's about it, brother. 